Scrub Scrub. Scrub Scrub. Rinse Rinse. Rinse Rinse. Dry Dry. Prime Prime. Paint Paint. Shiny paint. Shiny. Shiny. Glue glue. That's right, little chook. We're gluing. Time to glue the fuselage hards together. I haven't actually finished painting the cockpit tub. Just got to paint a few things. I might end up using the decals on the side there instead of just hand painting, but there's not much there. There's not a lot of detail in this kit. It's okay, but it's nothing to write home about. I've glued in the, uh, as, you, as you know, from my little montage. I hope that was a bit, a bit of fun. <laughs> okay, I've done the instrument panel. Uh, that decal went down really, really lovely. Uh, no problems at all. And then I've just got this piece that's going to go on the canopy, but that can be put in later. Uh, one hopes. I hope I've done that right. Hopefully I can slide that in there. And uh, the, the where is it? Is over here. The pilot. I've base painted the uh, the ejection seat, and I'll paint him later because he should be able to go slot straight in. Famous last words. So it's time to put in the fuselage half pieces. I've already glued in the tailpipe, so that should just go over there like so and I've not yet to do this on camera so let's see if it goes together yes it dry fit nicely this looks okay kind of it's always apprehensive this bit isn't it doesn't look too bad okay there's no real attachment point here at the end it's uh, it's it's okay it's not the best now FX tells you to put this little nose cone piece on to this glue it on first and then glue the fuselage halves together but I'm a bit wary of them getting that right so I'm going to tack it on there and then glue these side pieces on but before I do that I've got to do the main reason why I'm building this kit is look at that nose gear one piece plastic that just slots into uh, there I think yeah I think it goes there um, so I better glue that on first so I'll glue that on first and then we'll get uh, I might have to do this off camera because I think I'm going to need three hands for this. I'll get out my favourite pretty pink pink clamp. I normally don't need to clamp things together because the glue goes off nicely. The tail looks like it's going to go together okay. And then there's an insert that has to go in here. And again, I hope that that fits alright. It seems to be okay, but again, I'm a bit wary of, uh, of airfix quality. But... You know, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm the problem. All right, let's get going, and uh, hopefully this is getting in. I might have to put that instrument panel in first, so I'll just do that first. Time to make a base for the Sabre. So I'm gonna use this uh, nine mil acrylic clear rod and an old award I got. What did I get this for? Oh yeah, for my AML 90 armored car. I might put a picture of it up there if I can remember to do that. That's what I like to do with uh, <laughs> these old block, wooden block awards. They're good for little stands. I'll show you my F14 that I did uh, recently, that's the Academy F14. Okay, uh, and what did I? What's that award for? Large armor. There we go. A couple of years ago, large armor. Well done, me. <laughs> anyway, it's a nice uh, block base, and all I did with that one was drill a hole in the side like that. Bent myself a nice rod, and I've inserted the rod actually in the side, which I've never done before. And I actually actually think it works quite well. If you want to do a sort of a almost level, I think I can. Yeah, tilt him up to fly like that. It's a, it's a different way of doing it instead of going through the tailpipe. That's what we're going to do with this one. So, I've got my block, I've got my rod. How do I bend the rod? Well, you need one of these. A heat gun. Let me have a closer look. This is a basic heat gun. I've taken the end off, the protective cap at the end. It's a cheap and nasty thing. 
I think it's blown out on me once or twice. Uh, and all you have to do is, well, I need to work out the sort of, before I get started, I need to work out the angle I'm going to have. So uh, I'm going to drill a hole in the end here. I haven't done that yet. I'll drill a hole in the center. And basically I'm going to have to make a C, a C, yeah, or a U shape. So I have to bend it in the middle. And I want to have it a bit of a jaunty angle, so the end piece going into the tailpipe will be like that. This piece will be like that. So I just, I'm just going to do it by, um, by hand. And I'll just show you on camera how it's done. The secret is, if you can see my bench down there with the distance, okay, you don't want to be going any closer than about 40 millimeters, 30 millimeters at most. And when you do, you don't keep it steady like that. You've got to turn it. So the way I normally do it is I'm turning and twisting like this, but because I'm, and also, yes, I, I do this and I go back and forth, twisting and turning, back and forth, twisting and turning. I just keep doing that. Now the way to do it, this is an overhead shot, but if it was side on, you want to do it side on. So then you know when you're almost there, there's this end starts to droop. Okay. Like an old man after 50 years of, yes, <coughs> work into that. So, um, <laughs> Keep it close, but not too close, and keep it moving. Never keep it keep it steady. If you keep it steady in one spot, you will get bubbles. It'll overheat. Also, the, even though all I'm really wanting is to bend this sort of area in here, uh, I want to heat up almost the entire rod because I need to do a fairly advanced shape. Uh, if I was only going to do a little bit here at the end, so say so I was just going to have a vertical rod. I've done that for my MiG-29. It's almost vertical, but I wanted the end to bend a bit. You still need to do you know, double the space it actually needs bending so you get a nice even temperature radiant. So I'll do a little bit of this on camera and then we'll see how we go. Better move that F14 out of the way or it's going to melt from that heat gun. Okay, here we go. We're getting droopy. You see that? We're getting a bit droopy. That's a good sign. A bit more heat. Now I'm just putting a little bit of pressure there. So obviously I've only got one side there that's it's doing that. I'm getting more of a J. I probably should have used a jig. I really want to heat up this area here, so I'll do that next. All right, we're getting there. Okay, that's pretty good. So I'm just resting one end on the, the base there, as you can see, and that looks like a fairly good angle. It's sort of a, a U. It's one bend, which is good. Can you see that? It's a bit hot. Okay, I'm just going to put this aside to uh, to cool off, but as you can see, that's it's pretty easy to do. Not I think I'm going to wrap up the second part of the build because I'm getting frustrated, as is per usual with modern day airfix. Um, yeah, the fit on this isn't very good at all. It's good enough, I guess, if you just want to slam something together. But for the price you pay for this kit, I mean, I, this would no, none of this would be acceptable for a modern day kit that you would get from, say, Tamiya or any other, you know, frontline brand. I mean, yeah. Let's just have a quick look. So I've got the fuselage hards together. Um, these spine parts seem to want to just snap in okay. They look pretty good. There's a little bit of a, it's not too bad, you know, all things considered. And there's gonna be a bit of a gap around this piece. Let me just tighten up here so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but I had a step here on the, on the spine. You can hear it. There was no way I could get no step there or, you know, this, there's a small step here as well. I mean, there are so many attachment points. They, they do lots of male and female lugs. You can see right in the bottom there. You think it all line up, and it does after a fashion. But I think it all starts with the nose. So I'll just take these out before we go. The nose is misaligned. Okay, can you see how that's gone off to the left or right? And that's because they only do one attachment to one side wall there. They don't actually have it um, 
this whole tub here just does not fit in properly at all. They haven't engineered it properly. Um, it's 1980s style, 1990s maybe, you know, engineering from 30 plus years ago. It's not good enough. You know, it's just not good enough. It's, it just shows how modern day FX kits just aren't up to snuff. So when I put the nose on, uh, and I almost glued it on, but then I realized I need to fill this seam, which again, another small step. So maybe it's me, maybe I don't know how to put models together, but I don't seem to have problems with other brands. Uh, I've taken off all the attachment, the, all the lugs there that are supposed to line this up because it just doesn't line up. Okay, and then what you get is you get a major lip there. So what I'm gonna have to do is insert basic modeling skills here. I'm gonna use a piece of sprue and I'm just gonna shove that over. Okay, I'm gonna move it over to make it central so that these all these parts line up. Uh, the back here doesn't line up. Uh, I've got it nice and smooth. This this seam, although there's going to be a small gap there, so I'm going to have to fill the whole thing. But none of the panel lines match up. Okay, they're slightly out, which is fine anyway because I'm going to have to eliminate that seam. So I'll just sand it back and then scribe it in. I mean, it's only a five-minute job, but you know, there it is. Uh, no rivet detail, of course, and the tail went together okay. And as you saw at the top of the video there, when I tried to slide in. I must admit, I do need to do a little bit more of fettling and trimming of this wing piece to get it to fit in. But it does seem to want to click in there. Well, it did a minute ago. Come on, come on, you piece of crap. All right, there we go, it's in. So the bottom doesn't look too bad. I've got to be real careful about this step here. But then when we get to the top, of course, you get two, two nice gaps, boom, boom. I mean, if I push the, the wings up a little bit, they sort of, they sort of disappear, but I think that I think the dihedral's right anyway, so I don't really want to have to go up anymore. Uh, and then on the side, there's a gap, and there's a gap, 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 gap. So yeah, this is this is why these kits are so fun to put together. Uh, at least let's look at the stabilizers. Do they actually fit? Oh look, I can't be bothered. I'll leave it there. Next part, part three. I will hopefully have all that done, and we can get onto the fun bit, which is the painting. Um, but yeah, would not recommend this kit, not for the price. It should be maybe a $40 kit and uh, it shouldn't have all these options. And yeah, sorry to end that on a bummer. It was fun at the start, wasn't it? But let's end it there and I'll see you next time. Cheers.